Hi guys, I'm finally back after God knows how many weeks of not making a video, but hopefully my audio is slightly better as I've now got a mic sat on top of my camera. But today we're going to be going through something that a lot of people on Instagram have been asking me about, and that's Lightroom. So we're not going to go into massive detail about it, but we'll be doing like basics basically, like getting your photos in, what you can change about them, and then exporting them at the end. So this is the photo that we're going to be editing today. And I'll leave a link to it in the description, just in case you want to use it to edit as well. But for the rest of this video, let's get over to Lightroom. Okay, so first of all, you want to start off by obviously opening Lightroom. All right, let's make that a bit bigger. I right, to get your photos in. Go to File, Import Photos and Videos, and then that'll automatically open the uh, fucking thing that I've got plugged in. Then you want to go to my MacBook, to my hard drive, users, me, and then literally wherever you've got your photos saved that you want to use. So at the minute I've put my one onto my desktop. Get that off. So untick all photos, you want to import everything. So there's the photo that we're going to use today. You want to, you can add it to a collection. Let's make a new one. Called test. Now let's put it in there. All you want to do is click import. And there you go. Your photo is in Lightroom. So from here, you can just literally view it on here. You can't actually do anything. You want to go to develop. Then this is where you can start editing. So we'll start off, first of all, I normally go and crop the image to the size that I want or rotate it. So you get your aspect ratio. Now the biggest Instagram I'll let you put on is four by five. So that's what I normally use. So you can either use that or as shot. Some people still upload square images, which is just a one-to-one -one ratio. But four by five is well better. So once you have that lined up, you can also if you go just to the outside, say you need slightly rotating a bit, you can change it either way to whatever you want. So let's put that back because I don't need to rotate it. There you go. So that's that bit done. Now if you go down here, you've got your white balance. So Easiest way to do it, you grab the little dropper, find a white, something that's white. So you've got a shoe there, socks possibly, but normally I go with the shoes. So you see, that's already massively changed the image. So everything's got a lot more orangey. And it's literally, you can do it manually as well by eye. So there's no nothing white on the shoe or anything. You can. Do it manually by it. So that'll change between blue and orange and then green and magenta. But it is a lot more difficult trying to do it by eye. So easy way. Click that. Jobs are good. If it doesn't look slightly right later, you can readjust it. All right, so start off. You can literally just click auto if you really want. And that'll change it to how it thinks it should be. But I'll go through everything that we need to. All right, so first off, we've got exposure. Now that's gonna change the overall exposure of the image, as you can see. It's a lot darker there, though you make it a lot more overexposed. But at the minute, I don't need to change it. All right, so contrast, what's that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna change the difference between the shadows and the highlights. So it's going to bring them either close together or further apart. So if we lower it, it's going to bring them closer together. So the image looks a lot flatter. And then if you raise it, it's going to darken your shadows and increase your highlights, making the difference between them a lot more. So either in the extreme of either of them, you don't want to go. If you're changing it, you only want to change it very slightly if you need to. But at the minute, again, we're not going to touch that. As a highlight, I normally start off with highlights, 
So I'll drop them right down. So you can see you get a lot more detail back in the background. Whereas if you have them way up, all that detail is lost. So I normally drop them right down. And then shadows, surface blind sure that's going to change. So normally, for me, I like having shadows quite high to keep the detail there. I know whites and blacks, so that's going to change. The white is the whites and the blackest blacks on the image, but it will change the exposure overall as well slightly. You can see that. So it's changing the sky, changing the whites on the on the Jordan. So normally, once again, I have them a bit bit down just to get a bit more of that detail in the background. All right, blacks. So you can see that slightly fading the image as you bring it up because it's getting rid of anything that's black pretty much. So normally myself I drop like to bring them down a bit just to get some of the dark tones back in the image. As a clarity, that's going to change how sharp the image is. What you don't want to do is that because that looks boring. Right, so I'll normally bring the clarity up. You can, you can put it way up there if you if that's how you like to edit, if you really want to, but I don't like having it massively high. That'll do. Alright, dehaze. So that's pretty much you're not gonna use it. You it's hard to describe when you would use it. Like say something's like the image is slightly like misted. Or something like that, you'd use dehaze to try and get some other detail back in. But most of the time, I won't use that. Vibrance and saturation. So, pretty much since self explanatory, how vibrant the colours are. So, you need to go right the way down if it's pretty much grey. Or you can bring them well up where the image looks appalling. Normally, I'll bring it up very slightly. Then, your saturation. As well. Not leave that right now. That'll do. So turn up curve, we're not going to talk about because that gets very complicated. So in the next bit, you've got your HSL slider. So your hue saturation and luminescence. So hue is basically where you can change the colours of everything. So you can see red, you can go to like a purpley magenta and to an orange. And the same with orange, orange goes to red to yellow. Yellow goes to orange to green. Green goes from green to aqua. Aqua goes from green to blue and so forth. So it'll just keep dropping it down in colors the further or bring it up the further away, the further you put it. So reset all them. I suppose most of the time, so you can see the sun is quite yellow, so I want to bring a bit more orange into that. And then maybe bring the oranges down a bit more to a slightly redder. And then everything else we don't really need to touch here. It's not even doing anything. Maybe blue slightly to aqua in the sky. But not too much. I right, so saturation. So I want I want this red to pop a bit more. And I do bring that up. The oranges possibly bring up a tiny bit more. Yellow down a tiny bit. Everything else, once again. Ah, was not even doing anything. Like, there's no there's no need in changing colours that aren't even in the photo. So the rest you don't even need to touch. Then luminescence is how bright a colour is. So if you play with the reds, which is a lot of, that's going to brighten up or darken the red on that shoe. So want that a bit brighter, just so it pops a bit more in the image. Maybe. Uh, no, I like this. I like I like that red now. Oranges. I'll bring them up a tiny bit. Split turning, not going to do. Detail, not going to go through. 
right? Lens correction. It, it, this is only going to matter massively if you're using a very wide lens. So this was shot on a 35mm. Oh no, it's not. It's shot on a 20mm, even. Alright, so what it's going to do is remove any chromatic ab uh, aberrations and enable the profile correction. So that's going to fix any distortion that the lens has caused. So you can see, slightly unwarps the photo and it gets rid of the uh, vignetting that my lens has caused around it. But a lot of the time myself, I like to keep the vignetting just because I like the look of it from the lenses that I've got. And then you can change how much of the distortion you want to fix. So you can see that's warping the photo quite a bit. But Lightroom has pretty much got every single lens you can ever think of. And if you're shooting in RAW, it will recognize the lens that you are using and it'll just automatically pick it. See there, it's got Sigma 1.4, 20mm 1.4 even. And then the profile of that one for Canon. And that'll automatically fix it for you. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I think I want to actually bring the highlights back up to any bit. Just because it's looking... Slight, it was looking slightly grey in there. But already, if we switch between the two, you can see a massive difference between the two photos. And if there's anything, if you want to go like back miles, like you think, oh, I've messed up, rather than just undo, 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 there's a history bar here, and it's got everything that you've changed so far in the photo. So if you really want to, you could go right back to the start. And it also gives you a preview of where it was up to. Okay. But that's about that, to be honest. The photo looks all right with that, and we haven't even done that much to it. You could go spend 10 times longer if you wanted doing it. So what you're going to do, right click, export, export. You want to choose where you want to export it to. That's where I do it to. Then you choose a name. No, I just let you go up and up and up and up and up. And my organization is not amazing. But this way you can change. So the format, I'll normally export them as JPEGs because I've got no reason to export it as anything else that's literally just for Instagram. Uh, you can change the height. So I know I think I've shrunk it down a tiny bit just so. It's not taken up loads and loads of room on my computer since they're only for Instagram and I can go and re-export them if I really wanted to. But you, you can just untick resize to fit and it will just export it at the full quality that it is. And you can take off limiting to that. All right, so let's you once you've done that. Export. Exporting one file. And it is done. You go find it again. Where is it? There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. But that is it. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon. As I said, this image will be in the description if you want to play around with it yourself. See you in a bit.